Hi YouTube, Musical Avid here. We're on the ground in Devonport with uh, Cessna 172, Jill Kill November. We'll be flying uh, to Flinders Island today, so a little bit of overwater action. Make sure you have your life jacket. And uh, yeah, let's walk over to the aeroplane. That over there is the uh, main terminal. But we're not going to the main terminal because we're heading over to uh, where we've parked our sister. Bit of a jog. As you can see, the uh, weather's not that great. I think the uh, clouds are like uh, down somewhere around the 2,000 foot mark. Quite overcast. So we'll need to uh, be a little bit careful to maintain below that cloud. So here's a little uh, airport building. I believe that's where a toilet inspector would need to inspect. Let's head on in. Hello to Tim, how are you doing? So the reason we're doing this midweek is we need to pick up the pace a little bit. We need to get ourselves over to Victoria, hopefully on Friday. And then on Saturday and Mon oh, Sunday and Monday we'll be uh, finishing the tour. So uh, Sunday we're going to fly through the Gippsland and through the bottom end of um, kind of the Mornington Peninsula. And then on Monday we'll be finishing the tour. By heading over to Essendon. Oh, the Aaron, how you doing? Doors open, let's uh, jump on in. Ah, look at that rain. Okay, so I'll we'll need to uh, turn on the batteries, drop some flaps. Let's check in the fuel, got a little bit more in the right than the left. Yeah, we might feel up here. It's going to be annoying doing it in the wet there. QF Aviator. Okay, we'll just need to undo the tie downs, push the aircraft over to the, uh, the fuel bowser, fill her up. And actually, don't even really need that much fuel today. It's only going to be about hour and 20 minutes of flying and it's raining we do have that fuel imbalance though so it's been annoying I might go and uh, fill it up anyway anyhow let's do the uh, walk around in the rain Tie down is off, hinges are happy. Flaps are good. Uh, simple three. I've given it some thought, but I haven't made the uh, decision to do that. I think we'll be moving over to the Microsoft Flight Sim in the next week and a bit. Fuel drain is done. Yep, 
<laughs> Aaron's saying it's not crap. <laughs> That's, uh, if had there been an X-Plane aeroplane that I was really interested in, I would have gone for it, but at this point, the TFDI is looking like it's going to come out first. Tie down off. That's off, that's clear, that's clear. Flaps are good. Alright, we're just going to taxi over there onto the uh, pavement, make our way off to uh, the fuel buzzer, and we'll fuel her up there. Before we do move, it might be a worthwhile endeavour to have a listen to Atis. A Wiss, sorry. Weather Information Service, Devonport Airport, time 0803 Zulu, wind 150 degrees magnetic at 5 knots, visibility 20 kilometers, present weather, no significant weather, cloud broken 1,400 feet, overcast 3,100 feet, overcast 4,400 feet, temperature 10, dew point 10. QNH 1009 a hectopascals. Rainfall last 10 minutes nil. Automated Weather Information Service. Devonport Airport. Time 0803 Zulu. Wind 150 degrees magnetic at 5 knots. Visibility 20. Okay, so the uh, cloud of 1,400 feet. It's going to make things interesting. We're going to be cruising the... Uh, the coastline at 1,000 feet by lots of it. 10 degrees Celsius, 1505. So, that's going to be a runway either or really. I think 24 ever so slightly, but it's essentially all crosswind. And now we're not taken off on the grass taxiway, on the grass runway in this weather. <laughs> We're lucky to get it out of here. Anyhow, let's start her up. Pump on. Fuel flow in the green. Clear prop. Showing 13. Going to Devonport's uh, seat up. Taxi on out to the concrete first. Oh, 
up we go. Right, we'll put our left wing next to the Bowser there. A bit of a tight turn here. Close as we can without touching any of the other aircrafts. That one's quite inconveniently placed. As hard as we can. Can't quite see the wingtip, it's going to zoop down a bit. <coughs> Breaks the set. Okay, time to do some refueling. Brakes are off. Looks like we're going around the back today. It's a static line. <laughs> they have put one here. Dang. So let's refill without it. All right, a ladder up the top. Let's top the tank out. There we go. We'll carry as much fuel as we can from here because it's much cheaper here than it is at Flinders. And we'll need all of that fuel to get all the way over to Yarram on the other side of the, uh, the Bass Strait. Retract. Charge the card out. And off we go. Glad to see the weather improved a bit. Aussie Aviator joining us on this one. Good stuff. Once again, we do need to have a one view that looks out the wings. Cool, before we move off, we're going to have a look at what we're doing. We are leaving Devonport, heading to a place called Sorel. 
There's no actual airfield there, we'll just fly over it. Here is the VTC. <clears throat> Let that reload itself. So leaving Devonport, I think we'll take runway 24 to a uh, left, uh, right hand downward. We could do runway 06. It's essentially the same. And we can do the straight out departure. So yeah, I think we'll do 06. Backtrack, take off, straight ahead. From Devonport, we uh, climb at 80 knots until we hit Port Sorrel. Uh, from Port Sorrel, we're going to continue along the coastline and then land at Georgetown. We might do a landing, might do a touch and go. Um, from Georgetown, we'll uh, continue on through to Bridport. And here we have uh, Piper's, Piper's Point, Piper's River. Yeah, there is Piper's River. So across Piper's River, about 12 miles out of Georgetown, and then into Bridport. Now, Bridport is a small dirt runway, so if the weather is wet, we may just fly over it do a circuit, not actually touch the runway and just continue on. Uh, Bridport's interesting because it's got a gun club at the airfield, so if we were to stop there you could fire some uh, fire at some clay targets. Of course we don't want to be flying along there when they're firing, so we do make, need to make an announcement on a frequency. Now the Bridport frequency about the same as the Georgetown frequency, which is 127.3. From there we'll uh, fly up to uh, Flinders Island, we will make an approach into Lady Baron. All things weather conscious. Here is our uh, weather, showing meta that we heard on the uh, on the system. Flinders Island showing a uh, TAF, showers of light rain scattered 5000 and uh, wind 3308, showers of light rain getting down to 2000. So things that we do need to worry about are we are crossing water today. Make sure that you have your uh, life jacket. That should be tied around your waist now. So that's there when you jump out. If we do need to make a water evacuation of the aircraft, I will probably ask that you open, or at least crack open the door on the descent before you touch the water. And um, that's just to make sure that the door is clear of any warping of the frame. Once the aircraft does come to a stop, it may be upside down. Just make your way out of the aircraft and uh, open the door. The door will open forwards and then you can springboard off it um, to the tail. Always make your way to the tail of aircraft when exiting because there is a propeller at the front and you don't want to go through the propeller arc because that gets messy. Flight time today is about 80 minutes so we should be on the way shortly and uh, if you haven't been to the toilet it's over there in that building. Once we uh, get started we will not be stopping for at least 80 minutes. All good to go? Alrighty, we'll go ahead. Checklist. Airplane weight and balance, two POB. And full tanks. Two persons at the front of the aircraft, which makes it slightly nose heavy, which is pretty much perfect. That's where we want to be. Nobody's in the back. All is good and done. Uh, park and brake is set. Control wheel lock is removed. Ignition and avionics are off. Master switch is on. Fuel quantity shown 100%. Static source. Is closed. 
Now, yeah, the panel was uh, tested before you moved the first time. It's shown well. Fuel selector set to both. Shutter valve is off. Flaps are extended. Nope, they're retracted now. Uh, master switch off. Elevator trim is set. Bottle cracked open. Mixed rich. And we'll start the engines. Clear prop. One thousand RPM. QNH one zero zero nine. Straight up to Georgetown. Oh well, that's worth a try. to 6.9 set. Devonport traffic, Jolly Kill in November is uh, taxiing from the GA apron runway 06. We'll call uh, when holding shot. Care up on Delta, we'll be uh, tracking out Charlie Alpha Bravo. Brakes are released. That uh, visibility out in that direction is not looking great. This might be challenging conditions. If we do need to return back, uh, we may make a, uh, a landing on 2 4. Let's see how we go. At least it's not actively raining right now. Okay, I'm going to the run-ups on this line here, so we don't uh, foul any uh, RPT traffic. 1000 RPM, all temperatures in the green. Mixture is rich. Devonport traffic, pick up Tango Taxi, drama 06 by Charlie and Ben Brothers.
Looks good. Okay, checklist. Board takeoff, seat belts, doors are all secure. Make sure that the seat won't move forward and backwards. Yep. Fire controls are frame correct. Instruments are set. Let's check in on our heading. 240. Yeah, not really. Yep, 240 set. Uh, mixture is rich. Fuel selector valve to both. Mag check completed. Radio is set and elbow trim is set. Flaps up for takeoff. No aircraft on the runway. Devonport traffic, Juliet Kill November entering runway 06 backtrack. I was gorilla. I do indeed, but that's because I actually flown this registration in the real world with this equipment on board. So uh, yeah, I like it. Oh, it's fun to fly an aeroplane that you've actually flown in the real world. No, they don't have a G1000 on this aircraft, only this layer. Uh, they've got a couple of different GPS's you can pick from, but I'm using the GTN, the 650. Oh, no, air do not have a G1000. Default flight sim 2020 does. Mr. Rich, off we go. Traffic Devonport, Jillica, November departing runway 06, straight ahead departure, eastbound. Before we start blast on the way, lights are on, pumps are on, off we go. Sixty-five, off we get. Seventy. Power to seventy-five, there it is. Fly my way. Oh, this is challenging. <laughs> We're going to run out of, the, of uh, ground visibility. Get the port traffic, air from the Tango, enter your main street. Before we hit a thousand. What the heck?
1,000 to go, or less. As I said, we'll track it up at 1,000 feet. If we go offshore, it can probably even do 500. Stay glued to the shoreline here. Okay, time was two nine thirty four. Seven port traffic, echo for Tango departs from my jurisdiction to the east. Uh, this is definitely special VFR kind of stuff. And when I say special, we might mean, uh, you know, very special. Very special <laughs> VFR. It's reporting 10 mile visibility, but it's got nothing. About 2 mile visibility at best. If we stick to the shoreline like glue, we won't have to worry about mountains. Um, knowledge that the cloud base was being reported as 1,400. So if we stick at 800 feet, maybe even 900 feet, we should be okay. But there's that hill that I was after. Yeah, it's getting to that IFR point. I'm not even sure we'll be able to land at uh, Torsta. Sharp turn in that direction very shortly. There's the water. Time 31. Okay, yeah, we're going to kind of convert into an IFRE kind of thing at the moment. Can't see anything in front of me. This is risky as heck. <laughs> if it was real world, we would have turned around already and uh, headed back to Devonport. Landed and said, yep, no, not going in today. Does Georgetown have a... Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. No AUS at Georgetown. Um, we're literally uh, using the GPS to navigate by right now. The other option is looking at the, the heading, but yeah. There's no visual navigation happening. <laughs> ah, what's the weather doing tomorrow? <laughs> Might be worth looking into that. Nope, still rain. It's worse tomorrow. <laughs> Great. Today's 70% precipitation. Tomorrow's 90%. 
and Friday is thunderstorms. Sunday is not much better. Monday is a, a window. I have a JB Aviation. I haven't actually pre-ordered and I probably should. I have enough money to. So... I hope that's the sea below us. <laughs> you know, flying IFR to um, Flinders Island is an option. There's the shoreline again. Yeah, we might have to turn back and do an IFR flight. Spencer's got the right idea. Let's do 180, go back to uh, Devonport, then we'll just file an IFR. Would have been nice to visit Georgetown, but yeah. We're at 500 feet and can't see diddly. See that aircraft on the TCAS. Go back out over the water. There's the traffic. Traffic, traffic, traffic. <laughs> Physically saw the traffic. That's not cool. Yeah, we're just going to sit here in the Merc and use the GPS to follow it our way back to uh, Devonport. I mean, there's risk, and then there's just whatever we're doing now, which is beyond risk. It's it's silly. Alright, the best option is now to uh, use the IFR capabilities of the aircraft and uh, we'll fly IFR to um, Flinders Island. I can see the shoreline again. Got maybe a couple of seconds of visibility at the front. Uh, we will uh, go back to Devonport, we'll land at Devonport, we'll vacate the runway, we'll do a U-turn, and then we'll file an IFR flight plan. And make our way up that way. What height do we reckon? Yeah any height that we want to. Eastbound, so it'll be odd. Let's go 5,000 feet. Is there another bit of traffic out there? No, nope, that's a waypoint. Cool. Devonport traffic, Juliet Kilo November is uh, back inbound uh, runway uh, 24. Uh, straight in approach to land. Probably not the best idea to do a straight in. Let's do 06 again. Jill Kill November is uh, 
going to position of a downwind of runway 06 at uh, Devonport. There's the shoreline, let's go back to the direct two. Really, we pass. No, there's a lot there. Cool. We're at 500 feet, we're going to do a 500 foot circuit. Will it even be possible to land in this? I'm not sure. There's the runway. <laughs> Don't want traffic. Jolkill November is on a uh, downward runway uh, 06. Full stop. JB Aviation, I think I'll get the most expensive version just so I can get uh, a, one of these Cessna 172 with proper gauges in it. Okay, brakes are released, the carriage is fixed, mixture is rich. Pumps are in. Seat belts secure. On way 06. Quite a low circling approach into this one. Port traffic, drill kill November, turning base, runway to 06. Overshoot like nothing else. Yeah, no, we'll throw that away. <laughs> Devonport traffic, you're at November on the go around runway centre line, 06. Aircraft spoiled on TCAS. We've got a Melbourne Centre online. Does anybody want to do an IFR pickup or should we land it and refile? Spencer. We've got enough fuel to fly for four hours.
he's not actually turning in, is he? He's going out, out straight away. You know, we could actually uh, do that straight out. Yeah, that's on a far pickup. Uh, to do that, I just want to hold an altitude for a bit. And we'll stick it into this thing. Let's kill that. Curse on. Speed coming up. Three eighty nine Nanta. We'll spin around the airfield again for a second pass. We'll uh, give a uh, time estimate from uh, Melbourne Snowy. Continue that climb up to uh, 5,000. Uh, 125 decimal zero from the uh, center. Two four zero, sorry. Melbourne. Melbourne Centre, Gillette Kill November, uh, the pilot uh, Devonport's requesting IFR pickup. Alright, JB Aviation, we're just going to fly this uh, same trip backwards, essentially.
not been sent to our jet, it can have been Melbourne Centre, Cessna Julie Kill and Ember request. Seven degrees Celsius, four thousand. We're going to have to convert to uh, IFR mode. We're going to pick up some Aussie charts, Windows Island. Thousand feet to go. So yeah, JB Aviation, our uh, expected first flight in FS2020 will probably be around the Melbourne area in a something small, GA. The intention is to do an entire Around Australia Season 2 with the new sim. Time out of uh, Devonport was uh, 46 for purposes of Melbourne Centre. Time 5 0 for the moment. Uh, we will be speeding up. Maybe, we'll see. We've only got a couple of days between uh, arriving into Essendon and, uh, and the new sim being released. That's 
sort out our RPM, showing 23 and a bit. EGT. That's a little lean a peak. That's a peak. A little rich. Melbourne Centre, do you want to get a November request? Centre Carl Harris, interesting. Melbourne Centre, Juliet Kilo November, request. Uh, thank you for calling Melbourne Centre, Ready for the two by five, just take off time again. Uh, Juliet, Kilo, November. Might drop another thousand. Juliet, Kilo, November, go ahead. Juliet, Kilo, November departed Devonport at time uh, 4 6, uh, tracking IFR to Flinders Island. Estimate uh, Flinders Island at time 3 9. Go ahead. Juliet, Kilo, November, uh, Melbourne, Canada. Swap code 4470 and just take any estimate. Swap code 4470, estimate Flinders Island, time 39. Juliet, Kilo, November, copies, uh, and your IFR. Juliet, Kilo, November, AFM, IFR. Juliet, Kilo, November, Roger, maintain 5000. No Maintain 5,000, cover the traffic, chill it, kilo November. We are IFR. I want it to be VFR, but we can't be. We also can't land at Georgetown or Bridport or Lady Baron. So it's uh, a direct flight now. Weather is too bad. Four degrees Celsius. There's Georgetown right there on the uh, Tamar River, I think it is. Yep. YCRN is Crandon. And the Bird River up there, which is roughly where um, Bridport is. And Flinders Island's right ahead. Hi oh, the Rossi, good to see you. Yeah, I saw you uh, <laughs> pull off the runway just for us. And park next to me as well. Anyway, we're going to listen to the AWIS over there at Flinders. Automated weather information service, Flinders Island Airport, time 0855 Zulu, wind. 070 degrees magnetic at 5 knots, visibility 25 kilometers, cloud broken 4,900 feet, broken 5,500 feet, overcast 8,300 feet, temperature 11, 2.9R, QNH 1009 hectopascal. All right, so at Flinders Island we have wind 0705. One way five looks like an interesting option. Only one four slightly uh, more sane. It's a thousand meters, it's another kilometer runway. You can join on the uh, right hand base. Is that possible? Not only is it possible, it's uh, required. Night landing is not permitted on 2 3. 
not takeoff's not permitted on zero five. I doubt IMC would be a good idea either. That said, runway zero five is the only one that I have approach. That's hilarious. Might do runway zero five after all. Liza. Indeed, quite a bit of terrain to the south of the island. Pity won't be flying over the south, but you can see it there, 2,500 massive hill there. Would have been nice to do Lady Baron, but I don't think we'll be doing that. Not sure why we're holding at uh, <laughs> 100 feet below. I'll uh, see if we can do that. Fix that last bit of uh, altitude there. Q&A Chapel Flinders was 1009 that's what we're set. Interesting, yes, set the QNH in the autopilot. Good call. Well, we did say uh, GA around Australia, we didn't say VFR around Australia, did we? So here we are, stuck in the cloud, IMC. And we're going to be like this for the next 40 minutes, roughly. Oh, the Rossi, I'm thinking SNN will be next Monday, coming up, during Milk Run. Indeed, no celebratory dinner, unfortunately, because we're all locked down. Maybe we'll have to do it at the end of round two. <laughs> Would have been nice to give uh, Tasmania a little bit of a better send-off and land at Georgetown and Bridport, but as you saw, the cloud was down at 500 feet at times. Ah, that'd be it. Night time because of the masts. Okay.
That's right. If it's 2020 uh, Tuesday or maybe Wednesday, depending on how well my installation goes. <laughs> Probably going to be Wednesday at, at the earliest. Might even be Friday. Depending. But it'll be sometime during the week. Thanks for your ten dollars, Grant. Very nice. Are you in uh, lockdown as well already? Poor old Grant. New Zealand going back to lockdown again. <laughs> there are some postcards of uh, Georgetown. Mum has some friends that live at Georgetown in Tassie, so it would have been nice to uh, touch go at their airfield, but you know, it's also nice to not crash. Uh, Deuce Games, I'd suggest you wait for about oh, one week and buy yourself Flight Simulator 2020. Especially if you're wanting to expand your GA prop stuff. That said, we don't have it yet, so who knows? Maybe it's not that good. But yeah, P3D, all the versions are the same, you get the most recent one, which is version 5. Um, if you're a student of any sort, you get the student version. If you're not, you don't. There you go. But yeah, wait for 2020, it's only a week away. Yeah, so those massive tall trees are a bit disturbing, aren't they? Like, they're 200 foot tall trees. What the heck? Edward Guthrie and Jet Moat, we're using a prepared version 4.5, which is one version old, uh, with uh, all the add ons that you see listed. A uh, honeycomb yoke, CH pedals, CH uh, throttles. A Cyborg Evo stick on my left hand. Active sky for the weather. Scenery is listed below. Juice games, yep, we are getting very bored and slightly stir crazy and massively long haired in lockdown. <laughs> and as far as the New Zealanders are concerned, yeah, 
That's interesting. Ah, poor old uh, Grant Miller with his uh, not unlimited internet. And that's true, if you've got internet that's slower than, I can't remember what the, the minimum specs are, you may want to consider a different sim. Fair enough, Tim. Yes, uh, Sean, we are IFR. We're talking to Melbourne Centre. We have IFR clearance. We're IFR at 5,000 feet. Although by the time we pass outside that loop, we'll be below Class E. So Class G IFR. There's our transponder code, 4470. Our freezing level was, I think, 8,000 feet, which is why we're down at 5,000, because I didn't want to push it with 7,000. Would have been like one degree up there. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, four degrees Celsius, five thousand feet. I'd love to climb higher just to get to stay inside the controlled airspace, but we can't, so we won't. Uh, the other thing that I would have loved to have done was fly VFR down to Georgetown, Bridport and Lady Barrett Island, but that's not happening. Yeah, going up in case the engine quits would be nice. However, going up would, you know, 
calls a wing icing. <laughs> the, we do have our life jacket. We already have that packed because we're all flying across water. So, yep. The briefing is if the aircraft does have an engine failure, uh, we'll start the glide at 65 knots. We'll open the doors as far as we can get them, at least a dryer and off the frame. Uh, pull the aircraft up into a very nice stall with full flap. Water landing at about 40 knots and uh, the aircraft may flip over. We will have our shoulder straps on as hard as possible so that as the aircraft pitches over, it will be stopped. We won't have our heads flopping into the, the dashboard. And once the aircraft stops moving, off we go. Open the door as hard as you can, push the window open if you need to, and uh, jump out. Acknowledging that the aircraft may well end up on its roof. So with any luck, we don't have to worry about any of that, and we'll get there dry. But, you know, we've got the EPIRB. There's an ELT over there. Engine's uh, humming along nicely. It's uh, leaned out slightly richer than peak. It should be doing okay. I like Kip mentioning sharks. <laughs> Our shark strategy is hopefully we don't have to land in the water. And if we do, stay with the aircraft until it sinks. So I'm talking to air traffic control, the uh, Engine failure checklist would be declare a Mayday, Sports 7700, establish best to glide, um, open the door ajar, pull everything as tight as possible, and land as slow as possible with all the flaps. I reckon we'll be flying the Arnav Approach, runway 05. MA Aviation, I would of course recommend the uh, Boeing 737 by PMDG. That's a uh, 737, 800 and 900. With some expansions. Um, I don't recommend any uh, classic. There's uh, two 737-200s floating around. I don't really have a preference between the two of them. Um, I think the Captain's in the only one for version 5, isn't it? Uh, the other one was uh, the Milbys. Yeah. Neither of them are that amazing. Oh yeah, PMDG is certainly the best of the, the options with the 737 and P3D. Um, I think the other option would be iFly. Not really a fan. And any other option worth looking at is full cockpit sim builds. So, you know, flight deck solutions, that kind of stuff. There is a cheaper option, uh, iFly. Is that even for V5? Possibly not. I know it works in V4, I'm not sure about V5. Yeah, it seems iFly is not available for version 5. Okay. Too bad. So sad. <laughs> and you, to be honest, the iFly is not even... It's not as good, and it's not that much cheaper. 54 bucks. 
mothers will keep you thirty dollars and spend it on uh, PNG. Oh yeah, Twitch. I forgot to look at the uh, chat for that so far at all. <laughs> Sorry Twitch, I haven't been reading your messages at all. Ah, oh, there's only like one person there anyway, and it's probably you. Eagle Firefly, good day. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete all the words that are essentially useless to us now. Oh, I've deleted uh, Devonport. There we go, we only have two airports now. Bridport, uh, sorry, Devonport and Flinders. R.I.P. Georgetown, R.I.P. <laughs> Bridport and Lady Baron. Set is still online? Yeah, no, he's disappeared on us. Setta has uh, disappeared on us. That's a pity. And he's back. <laughs> or maybe someone else is back.
I'm not sure about calm, we're flying over the uh, Bass Strait, it's uh, raining, it's <laughs> not too windy, but you know, the Bass Strait. Yes, my assumption would be that the seas are not nice or calm. Yep, we probably would beat the Spirit of Tassie home. I think the Spirit of Tassie does what, 30 knots at best? Or like 20? Certainly can't do 120. <laughs> Indeed, aircraft's flying pretty happily on this front. Just going to do a check of our fuel. That's happy. And we are probably needing to realign our DG. So it's showing a heading of uh, 3, so again, 0, 2, 4. I continue, yeah, I'd rather fly across uh, the strait instead of boat across. But then again, boating across you get to keep your car. Which is basically the only reason I'd ever do it. Of course you can hire a car once you, once you arrive in Hobart or Lonnie. Not exactly the biggest island in the world. We flew from, uh, where was it? Windyard all the way down to Hobart via the full southwest coastline in a 172 without refueling. So. Uh, Rossi, yep. We're only uh, doing two Flinders. It would have been nice to hit Georgetown, Bridport, Lady Baron, but IMC got the better of us, so we're just going to fly the approach into uh, Flinders and pull up the day. Hour and a half. Take a push bike on the plane. Or like uh, Stefan Drew with his little fold up push bike that he puts in, uh, in the Cirrus. <laughs> Ah, uh, the next leg after Flinders will be flying uh, straight across to Yarram, Victoria. Uh, not to Essendon, to Yarram. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get there reasonably well. From Yarram we're tracking down to, I'm thinking, Tradden, Tyab, uh, and then on the Nook Run Monday, out of Tyab up to, uh, is it, Lilydale, and then across to uh, Essendon for there. So yeah, still got what, Yarram, Tarb to Radden, and Lily Dell before I send the five airports. Uh, from Yarram, we're going to be in Jabiroos. So we just need to cross uh, this next bit of the Bass Strait 
in Julica November and then we'll be off on our other aircraft. Time 38, 10, 8. I'm going to load up runway 05 approach. From Zulu Alpha. Uh, that's whiskey. Yeah, that's fine. Top of the scent, right on there, cool. All right, so we'll be uh, entering the approach at 3,800 feet, maintaining uh, 3,600 till La Flizzy, and then uh, straight down the Arno approach. We'll be using the uh, glide path. Minimum descent altitude is 660 feet, which I'll write it down. QNH 1009er. Sent in a mile. <laughs> okay. Melbourne Centre, Juliet Kilo, November, requesting descent. Flinders Island will be drawing a zero five on Ever Branch. Juliet Kilo, November, thank you. Sorry for the It's King Island. We'll contact again on the ground to uh, cancel so much. Okay, no, 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 thank you. Okay, so first thing to do will be to reduce our altitude. 3,800. Power down. And contact CTAP. 127.8. Flinders Island traffic, Cessna, Julie Kilo, November is uh, 5,000 feet on descent uh, via the uh, 05 Arnav approach. We'll be uh, descending to make a uh, straight in approach, runway 05, and we'll call uh, 10 miles to a Canada. Pedal power propellers. I think there was an aircraft that did that back in the 1990s, 2000s. Someone made a very light composite aircraft and actually pedal powered it. <laughs> and there's that great little glider that you can walk around in and then uh, jump off a, a hill. <laughs> Q 
38, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Three thousand six. When is island traffic drill at Kilo November is uh, estimating circuit at time three eight. Inbound, final approach, runway is zero five. When is island? Minecraft. Yep, it's cleared up here in uh, good old Flinders. Not sure about going down to Lady Baron, there's still a lot of uh, cloud touch in the mountains down there, but we've got a clear shot into the uh, runway here at Flinders Island anyway. Mixture coming up. That's 3,000 feet. All right. Brakes are released. Undercarriage is fixed. Mixer fully rich. Pump is on. Lights are on. Seats and harnesses are secure. Pretty sure I've got the airfield in sight, not quite got the runway itself, but I can see the, the crossing runway. From this island traffic, Jolik in November is 10 miles from the field, straight in approach, runway 05. Runway is inside. <coughs> All visual from here.
Okay, full flaps. Fender's on traffic, look at the vendor short final 1905. Full stop. Time 41. Oh, and Tata, Jerk, Kenner, over. So I'll have to send him a PM. Well, I'll send him a joke in November. Ah, are you still on the thing? No, that's my send him. Cool. Traffic Funders Island, the joke in November has vacated. Hang out with that other Cessna over there. Coming up. Brakes. Melbourne Center, I can remember. Yeah. Switches off. Let's send a dot MSG ML snow
And let's jump on out. Okay, first things first, door close. That's our text message <laughs> coming through. So the first thing to do is put the tie down on. Chuck in a wheel check, wheel truck, sorry. And we need to cover up the pito. And welcome to Flinders. Alrighty, about uh, 10 to 8. So we've been uh, on the stream since 6 o'clock. Uh, about 1 hour and 45 minutes. Well... I think we'll uh, take to the skies next on Friday. Apparently the weather's not going to be much better than this. And so we'll probably have to go IFR up to uh, Yarram. So that's the uh, intention for the next flight, heading up to Yarram. It's a pity too that we didn't get to fly to any of these airports over here. <laughs> but there you go. IMC. We'll be flying up to Yarram today. Uh, next flight... Um, we might need to uh, track a, what, sail, even? Probably do Latrobe Valley from sail. Do IFR up there. Let's see if that's a viable strategy. So we're coming out of Numpa. Sail Latrobe Valley. That might happen. With any luck, we'll be... Uh, VFR enough to drop into uh, Yarram. Anyway, those will be Friday's adventures. Till then, I've been Miss Galabria. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the $10 as well for the donation. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Also, a shout out to uh, Twitch. We saw a would a Cessna make it from Melbourne to Tassie. Well, yes, it would. We're doing it right now. Cessna's going to fly for about four and a half hours and still keep their 45 minute reserve. So a flight from, say, Devonport to Moorabbin, it's only about two hours, about half the range. So you can quite easily do that. Yep, Cessna 172, four and a half hours of flight time at 110 knots. Simple math. Anyway, we will see you guys next time. Bye for now.